All right, then uh, let's get started with uh, today's lecture. This is the very first lecture. Uh, it's basically about a course introduction. So I'm going to answer a few questions about what this class is really about and what you can expect from this class. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this class is called uh, Advanced Control for Robotics. Uh, this, this class is really about control, not too much about robotics, by the way. Uh, here is the course information, and uh, uh, we will have a weekly Monday this time, and also Wednesday bi-weekly. And unfortunately, we have uh, two classrooms, you need to remember. I often don't remember. Uh, so most of the course material will be posted in the uh, website. On the website, this website is open to public. But also, we will uh, post, for example, homework solutions and your grades from uh, Blackboard. That thing we don't want other people to see. Uh, so regularly check this website for all the information you need. And uh, my name is Wei Zhang. I'm the instructor of this class. And we have uh, so far three uh, TAs. Uh, they were all, make sure you're in the WeChat group, OK? That's the logistics. And uh, I think many students are still uh, debating what to take for this semester. And so the first thing I need to tell you is what this class is about. And so this class is really about building a solid foundation in robot control and modeling, okay? So that uh, to do control, I think you need three things. At least you need to know how to model your system. Okay, that's very important. You cannot develop control out of uh, uh, scratch, you have to have a math model. And so we we'll cover quite a bit, almost half of the semester will be involved in modeling, uh, basically advanced kinematics and dynamics for robotic systems. And also when you design control, this class emphasizes uh, a lot about optimization based control design, which is uh, I think most up-to-date control methods are based on optimizations. So I have to teach you enough background on kind of advanced optimization algorithm and theory so that you can really appreciate or understand the state-of-the-art control method. And we'll cover some control method, uh, especially something related to nonlinear control. Uh, this semester, I hope I can cover uh, Lyapunov functions. Lyapunov functions and the control Lyapunov functions. Control Lyapunov functions, and also MPC and the, uh, optimal control. Each of this topic can be a separate class, so we will, I'll try my best, give you the shortest path to get to the main result, but we won't be too kind of a complete on each topic. Okay, that's the drawback. We only have one class, and we don't have other class as just talk about advanced control, so I have to cover as many as I want, as I can. Okay, a key uh, thing that I changed my mind this semester, I make this class really a theory class. Okay, before the class, I think this class was offered twice. Yeah, twice before at SysTech. I was kind of, a, it's, under, it's constantly under development, okay? And uh, initially it was targeted at uh, control, applied control with some kind of final project so that you can practice. And uh, later I realized from the feedback from the students, they would rather learn theory uh, from this class, okay? Because it's hard to do both, okay? And also this class almost serve as a math requirement for a PhD student and a master's, maybe PhD student, I think. So I have to cover enough math in order to make sure you understand or you get enough training on math. Okay, I think that's very important. If I understand the foundations, uh, for applications, I think that's your own research. You can spend time to connect theory to practice. I will give you some kind of examples to highlight the connection between theory and application, but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't teach you technology implementation details in this class, and this is really a theory class. And out, when you out, walk out, out of this class, you should be able to really understand most of the math and control theory part or modeling part of a robotic control system in the literature. For example, you should open any kind of a TRO, Transaction Robotics, IJRR, 
or ICRA, the, the, the kind of arrows, those kind of uh, the top conference and journals in, in, in robotics. Uh, whenever that paper had something related to dynamics, control, and optimization, I hope you have enough background to read them. Okay, I don't think I can teach you all the details of each in implementation of different robots, but I think I've tried to make sure you understand the theory as much as you can. Okay, you can see I mix too many things, so it will be a very tough semester for most of you, also for me. Uh, so because of theory class, I'm not sure whether you know about the difference between theory and application. For theory class, what's the most important thing? I think it's homework. <laughs> okay, homework, project. Uh, the, my project is not a project for you to build some robot, okay? It's really a project. You do some coding to understand the theory, okay? The project was designed to understand theory. It's not a design to change the world for now, okay? You need to understand the theory. Uh, so, so those are really, in other words, exercise is really the key for for understand any theory. Um, so if you audit this class, it doesn't work because I have so many kind of, uh, you cannot audit a math class. You can audit C++ programming, those kind of things. You can, you can read maybe in one week about this thick of C programming, those kind of uh, embedded system textbook. You can read very fast because that's information. But for math, for theory, you may take months to read just a few pages, right? It's really dense. It's really about convert your thinking pattern or train your abstract thinking and reasoning ability. So that take time and you have to exercise. I don't think we can do the exercise. In class, I will tell you how to think and what are the enough background for you to think but you have to think after class, okay? That's when I'm training your new network in your brain now, okay? So, so, so I can give you enough excitation, but you have to do the training, okay, offline after class, okay? Um, some programming will be involved, okay? And, uh, but only for better appreciation of the theory, as I mentioned before, and target students who should take this class. It's not saying that your, uh, your lab mates suggest you to, or sit in this class you should take. Uh, I think most of your students take this class in this room or online, by the way. I think that most of, I'm targeting a PhD students mostly, okay? And the PhD students with a strong need of advanced control theory. There are some PhD students that do more about, let's say, mechanical design, actuators, uh, other kind of integrations, and other kind of application driven stuff does not need advanced control theory. All you need is PID or maybe use a little bit of P MPC. That doesn't really, I don't think you need to go through this whole process to train it. Of course, if you have time, you want to learn, uh, it's fine. So that's why I have the third bullet, which is you have substantial time. Substantial means a lot, okay? Uh, you have a lot of time, I don't think you have, to read and learn and think outside class. Just come in or just watch video, it doesn't work. You can watch video to learn how to do ROS programming, how to install ROS, all these things very easily. But this one, you have to go through from the very beginning and do homework and think with me. If you click any of the video, maybe we post later, from anywhere, I don't think it makes sense. Okay, you have to start from beginning and follow closely with me, okay? And also, uh, I know there's a master student uh, also in this class, and uh, um, so the master students with a strong desire to pursue PhD, I think that it's worth it for you to really kind of suffer. Okay, you have to suffer before you can learn. Okay, that's my warning, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, also, I require to have uh, enough good math background. I don't teach you math in this class, but I expect you to be mature in math. What do I mean by that? You will see after maybe a few homeworks uh, whether you can survive. Uh, 
I can talk to you about this uh, grading because I changed the grading policy this semester. Uh, it becomes all about exams. Maybe this will be take home exams. Before I have a final project, um, it's really bad because I emphasize a lot of art foundations and the student have a two or three weeks to do a final project and I don't think they can do much. So I think that's, I would rather use those time to really kind of make sure that the theory is trained uh, well, good enough, right? I will also, as I mentioned, right? Homework project is important. Why is important and how I emphasize the importance? I need to test you on quizzes, right? So I will, I'm not sure how to do that on the, uh, this kind of mix online, offline teaching style, but I will try to have a quiz maybe every other week. So you have a lot of time to check whether you are on the right path. Okay, midterm, those are, it's, it's a, the theory class, okay, a core course. If you know that any graduate school, they will have a core course. Um, if you do control, that the core course typically is a linear system, right? It's a linear system, linear differential equations, training you really well about linear algebra and how to solve linear differential equations, also those fundamental concepts in controls. And uh, if you are doing more traditional like uh, signal processing, communication, those things, that's uh, from electrical engineering, the core course will be random variables, okay? When you do graduate st study, the core course is really random variables, probability theory. You have to learn that really well, okay? If you do uh, chip design, the core course will be physics or device physics. So that's kind of a core course. This class is a core course for intersection of control and robotics. So I will put it this way. Okay, um, so I'm doing this in backward. Okay, so anyway, uh, I require to know robotics. At least you have heard about robotics. If you, uh, so in, in the sense that you have taken undergraduate class, Typically, undergraduate class will be taught uh, using these two textbooks, one of them, uh, Craig's or uh, Mark Spong's book. Okay, these are very good books for undergraduate, for your introductory, uh, I would say, robotics class. It's almost like a, a core course for undergraduate in robotics. But if you, had, if you haven't learned any of this, you better to be really good at math, okay? So you can follow as well, all right? And uh, <clears throat> so I think you have to know a little bit about control uh, in the sense of uh, okay? So it's automatic control in the undergraduate training. So you know a lot plus transform those things. And the maturity in math is all I care. And uh, I need you to know Python or you can learn Python. Uh, I'm sure everyone can learn Python because it will be taught in maybe middle school, elementary school, they start to learn Python, right? So those things are fine. I think, I'm, I think anyone, any of you, uh, you can learn Python. I will give you some kind of uh, a tutorial on Python, not, not, not in class, but as an assignment, okay? Along the, our way, I'm going to use Drake for some mini project, just make sure you can implement some kind of uh, control algorithm to control real robots. Uh, so I like to use Drake and there's a tutorial I can ask you to kind of uh, read and watch outside class. These are the tentative schedules. Tentative means it may be changed later, okay? I never follow the schedule very precisely. Uh, this semester I hope I can cover as many as I can. Uh, but I'm really not sure. So it really depends on how you kind of feel. Uh, so today we will start with the matrix exponential continuous time linear system study. And uh, later we will talk about this. This is about, this tool is about modeling. Okay. Basically, how do you do a robot model? What, how do you describe a robotic system model, okay? And uh, so our modeling is also about kinematics and dynamics, but it's a school theory based. Uh, in most of the undergraduate courses, 
you have learned, you have learned this DH type of thing. I'm going to uh, share with you my perspective on the comparison between these two approaches, uh, but our approach is more uh, screw theory based. Okay, uh, exponential coordinate, uh, so twist, the wrench, those are the things we are going to cover and really want to make sure you understand these things. Okay, that's, I think it's very important. Everyone walk outside of this class should be able to understand school theory based robotic modeling, including kinematics and dynamics. You should be able to write some kind of simple dynamic simulators for a multi-body robotic system. Okay, that's, that's the first thing. Uh, later is about control. Okay, uh, you see, I don't teach you individual, too much individual control method because they are all based on some foundations. I will teach you the foundations those methods based on. So, uh, so first, I may spend, I don't think two weeks will be enough, but hopefully three, uh, basic optimization duality theory and also semi definite programming on the linear metric inequalities. Those are the key things for develop advanced control algorithms. Um, a lot of uh, papers, they will use those tools. You have to be able to know what they're doing. And I'll cover 30, I think only three weeks, I will try to cover everything you need to know about the outcome of stability. That could be a one semester class, but I will give you my version of it in three weeks. And uh, there's a lot of other things that are no longer needed. Um, I will make sure you cover, or you, you understand the key foundation for what the optimal stability is and how to construct the optimal functions using optimization and also control the optimal functions, CLF. Okay, that's uh, recently become very popular in a variety of uh, applications, including like a locomotion control, uh, mobile robot collision avoidance. Okay, so those are uh, become popular nowadays in robotics, but it's really a control method. Uh, so I'll have to cover some robot control. I'll basically cover robot motion control. Uh, before I have one lecture on force control, I may have that this semester, uh, but I think uh, these two will be enough for you to understand the, almost everything you need to know about robotic motion control. Uh, very basic differential IK and also a task-based inverse dynamics and computer torque approach. Uh, there could be a lot of other variations but uh, if I teach you a lot, all, all of those things will be, I don't think we have time uh, to do others. And uh, the next big thing, I hope I really can get through this, is about optimal control and the model predictive control. Okay. Um, uh, I hope I can cover general MPC theory, not only the implementation. So if you design MPC, I think many of you have heard about MPC. If you design MPC, how do you prove or ensure the closed loop system is stable and how to make sure uh, the property of recursive feasibility. Okay, it's not like you start running your system and later you find out your controller always return infeasible so that you can, your system will crash, right? So those are the theory. Um, theory is always beautiful, but application has a lot of details, right? I don't think we can really kind of bridge the gap in this class, but at least I can teach you the foundations. Uh, if type permits, I will cover differential DDP, okay? Differential than programming and uh, collocation for nonlinear uh, numerical optimization, optimal control. All right, that's the plan. As I mentioned, the plan will change. We may cover more or less, it depends on how we progress. Uh, that's about it. Any questions so far? Any questions? You can ask me offline about whether you should take this class. All I want to say is that sitting audit does not work, typically. And the most, you may surprise me or, or, or well, uh, uh, let me take it back. Last semester, there are two undergrad students sitting in the audit. They did really good. They also do homework and they also attend uh, uh, midterms. And finally, they didn't. And they, they perform really well. So undergrad student in such type is pretty good. Some of them, they have the motivation to learn this because of their past experience. Uh, 
The reason they survive is because not only all the, they just do homeworks. Okay, they do all the homeworks. They just as if they are taking this class. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. If no questions, so let's start. Oh, oh, those are the reference for. I'm going to. So my okay. Is there a textbook for this class? Absolutely no. And absolutely yes. Is there's no one textbook for this class that you can just pay through. Okay. The only text material is uh, my lecture note. Okay. I will try to make sure you have it before the class. And uh, so the material are taken from all these books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, maybe more. Uh, I, of course, you would learn the seven books, but I will take material from them. And uh, I think the, most of them have, uh, I provide the links to, uh, I think most of them are available online. Okay, you should be able to find it. Okay, don't read them. Okay, don't try to read all of them. I didn't finish read all, all of them. You should read books at this stage, at PhD especially, okay, you should read books to answer your curiosity, answer questions. Not reading book like reading a, 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 a dictionary. It doesn't work, okay? You have to, oh, you don't know this uh, word, you, you open your dictionary, find it, what it means. So that's things. I want to get you through, uh, maybe draw a path to connect them, hopefully. But those are the references. Um, Okay, now I want to, uh, so this class is a little bit weird in the sense that we uh, spend a lot of time on modeling and especially the model that I think is very useful but less understood from even the literature. Okay, even mature researchers. And these things, the screw theory based uh, twist, those kind of things, uh, they become more popular recently, but it's still hard for people to understand. Okay, some people attack why you should do this. It doesn't worth the time, and some people really like it. Uh, for example, if you read this book, uh, modern robotics now become really kind of uh, popular among students, and they will have uh, one chapter at the end, appendix, uh, criticizing DH type of uh, formula is not good. Okay, if you learn robotics from undergrad study, you should know DH formula to characterize uh, robotic kinematics, but they will criticize why it shouldn't be learned that way. Um, I'm, I don't have that strong opinion, but I want to share with you my version, okay, how to learn robotics. Oh, by the way, sorry, <laughs> corrected background readings, I will post these three uh, Things I think most of you should learn, uh, should know them pretty well. Linear algebra uh, and uh, some matrix calculus and advanced calculus. If you haven't, if you don't know anything of them, you can try to take a look of uh, another class we upload to the BDBD website. You should, you, you should be able to understand this uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, these five videos about uh, linear algebra. It's really basic. This is what's undergraduate class, okay? You should understand these things, and also you should be able to, I think there's a, uh, I don't think it's, hold on, I don't think it's complete. Oh, this Drake, lecture six, okay. Uh, try to install Drake. If you can't, you should, you should, yeah, you, you can stop taking this class now because later you will need it, okay? Uh, if you think that's too much programming for you, you're a pure mathematician, uh, you, you also know we try to somehow need you to be able to code, okay? So those things I want you to uh, be prepared, okay? Now I want to uh, share with you what I think is the best way to learn robotics. There are a few books. Many. Uh, don't look at this. The, the right hand side, the left hand side. These are about typical way to learn robotics. One way is uh, you based on DH formula and uh, 
to, to understand to model kinematics. And those textbook, uh, Craig, and also Spawn, they're pretty popular. I think it's good. I like the Spawn's version better than the other one, but they're almost equivalent. Okay, almost the same. Okay, and uh, also you have, if you are in the robotics community, you must have heard about this book. It's almost the Bible, the mathematical introduction to robotic manipulation, Marie Zhexiang Li, and also Shankar. Oh, this other classroom, <laughs> very romantic music. Uh, anyway, so this book is really good, but it's hard to read. Okay, so people will think that's not uh, a good way to learn. And that's why Lynch and Park have this modern robotics, they almost try to make this book accessible to undergraduate students. Okay, they sit in between, I think. Uh, and also these feather stones, that's our material mostly come from this book. It's called Rigid Body Dynamics. It does not have kinematics, it's mainly about dynamics. Okay, they assume you know kinematics pretty well already. Uh, this is really good, almost, I think it's the best, but it's hardest to read. It's not become, it's because it's hard, it's just because I don't have enough information, okay. I think it's too abstract and dry without too many examples. Uh, <clears throat> some people will claim, okay, this is undergraduate student will take this one, and a graduate student, you may need to learn this. I think that's a wrong way to classify or categorize these things, all right? The DH, or those version, versus screw theory-based uh, robotic modeling, they almost like uh, calculus versus real analysis. I'm not sure whether you know even these two class or not. From a math department, if you're a math major, you don't learn calculus. Right, you learn analysis. Su fen versus wei ji fen. Right, they're different, right? So for math major in, in math department, then you have to learn real analysis, even you are undergraduate student. Okay, and if you're a non-math major, like uh, engineering, other even maybe chemistry, other science, uh, you will just need to learn calculus. Okay, that's the two things. It's not about undergraduate or graduate. It's about major or not. So for me, I think the categorization should be the following. This one is robotic major. Although I don't think we have that major yet. Oh, sorry, this is non-robotic major. Okay, so people from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, they want to take a class in robotics, they can take this way. Okay, if you are robotics major, so you do robotics for life, for living, or as a profession, I think this is the way, even your undergrad student, I think this is the way to learn it. You have to learn this school theory based thing. It's really beautiful. Okay, that's the way to really understand the deep things. For, for this part, a lot of things, for this way, a lot of things you have to memorize. It's like you do calculus, you memorize a lot of formulas, maybe. And uh, for your analysis, you, you will know why the Lebesgue integration even work. Okay, how it's defined or developed. That's the, that's the difference. That's my view. Um, so that's why we are here, is that, as I mentioned, it's a core course. We focus on this way of learning. Okay, this way of learning has a lot of a criticism from other people, from the community. Okay, so these two group of people attack each other, by the way. They think this user is, they think the other one. Okay, anyway, I, I'm, I'm in the middle, by the way. Uh, but I have my word, okay, my, my perspective. Okay, so uh, I think this approach also can be classified into two ways to think or learn robotics. Three layers, okay. Uh, I think your background now it's let's see whether we can make this where to move, move this. Uh, hold on, that's fine. I think this uh, uh, your background now is here. It's really basic. Many of you, 
Okay, you may have learned undergraduate class robotics, but you haven't learned the screw theories, twist those things. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so the book you have, or more popular, is Murray's book. Maybe nowadays the Park book, but they are the same. It's just one have more examples, or written in a way targeting an undergraduate students. They are not perspectively, they are the same. Okay. This is more about taking differential geometry, differential geometry approach or geometric approach to understand the robot kinematic dynamics. Okay, so you will see in their books, there's a lot of, uh, how to say, uh, reference to this abstract differential geometry, manifolds, tangent space, those things. Okay, so a lot of people, they think. They don't want to learn the school theory based robotic modeling because it's impossible for them to really understand these things. Okay, it's different geometry. It's almost impossible. I think so. I think you don't have to learn differential geometry, manifold, tangent space, the algebra, the bracket, in order to remain in metric. All of them has indication in robotic modeling control, by the way. But I don't think you should learn this way. So in order for, for you to learn different geometry, you need topology, mass version of topology, and abstract algebra, not linear algebra, abstract. Xun Huan Yu, the low things, right? Abstract algebra, 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 and also real analysis. You need to really be trained on these things before you can really understand this. And understand this, then you can go down, it's maybe easier for you to understand, but only from math perspective. All we need is to understand these things, by the way. Okay. So that's the wrong impression. I also stopped me from the beginning, from, uh, sorry, stop me at the beginning from trying to learn really well about this uh, kinematic dynamics, because I think I need to know differential geometry before I can even read those books, but it turns out I don't think that's the right approach for most of you. Okay, that's wrong. I would say this is the wrong way for robotic engineer people, not mathematicians. This is not enough. It's not needed. Okay, this is almost, if you go this way, this is almost like, uh, I mean, it's almost like you learn PDE from math to understand heat equation or to understand EM circuits. Right? Yeah, Maxwell equation needs the PDEs, right? But you can take math course on PDE. Have you taken math course on PDE? That's all about measure, weak topology, weak conversions, a lot of things, existence, uniqueness of PDE. That's really hard. Some of solutions even don't know, they don't know whether there exists things. And to understand Maxwell equation, I don't think that's necessary. It's the same thing here. I don't think you need this to understand this. But unfortunately, these two books, somehow in between, you see what I see here, is, is somehow they still use, uh, if you, they will still use a joint, a joint operator, Lee bracket, because Marie Lynch Park, they're really great mathematician, they're great applied uh, mathematician, they really know geometry in their heart. Okay, so that's why they really love it. This is more geometric approach. So they, they somehow use those math to the way that they feel really neat, but I think it's not necessary because I think this is the best way to me. I'm not sure whether to other people, to me, this is the most best way. This is almost like a physics. This is a physics approach. This is a math approach. This is in between, and the other one is a physics. You learn everything about it because robotic kinematic dynamics is about physics. You should just learn physics. For example, they will uh, they will introduce a spatial velocity, spatial acceleration, spatial cross product. This is almost like a leap bracket, but they don't they don't over over abstract them. Okay, they will just give you a physical meaning what it means for physics. Okay, so and uh, they don't have a joint operator, okay? If you read this book, the, the notation is still a little bit too heavy and too abstract. A joint, but it, a joint operator is nothing but change of coordinate matrix, 
if you think that way, for twist or for screw axis. So you, you can somehow get more physical understanding of the, 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 the material without going too abstract, okay? So my approach this semester and uh, for all of you, I'm going to combine these two, four books, uh, not too much about Jane's book. Jane's book uh, uh, notation is even, but I cannot deal with it, okay? This is, a, uh, I think these three books mainly, a Ross Tedrick like this book seems like, all right? But I think these three will be enough. So you see my notation somehow is a mix among these three books. I've tried to take the good side of these three books and try to teach you that, all right? Um, I hope that explains why we need, why you need to suffer. If you're a robotic major, you want to do robotics, either master or PhD, or even undergraduate, you should learn this approach. And learn this approach, don't listen to other people say that's too hard, you need to know different geometry, you don't. Okay, you just from physics. Of course, there's not an ideal book, uh, maybe this one is a little bit better, but still I don't think satisfy uh, all I need. Maybe I represent some students at least, okay? So I'm trying to mix uh, these three books for you to teach you about robotic uh, kinematic and dynamics, all right? That's the plan. So, so that means the first almost uh, one third of this class is about these three books. So whenever possible, you should download these books and start reading a little bit. Okay. 